probably the easiest one. So in order to implement the report print my timesheet, we're going to need a controller and we're going to call that controller the print timesheet controller. It's going to be um, it doesn't really need to be the simple form controller, but that's another uh, way of implementing it. It could be either the simple form controller or it could be the just plain controller. And actually, I'm going to implement both of them for you so you guys can see the difference between the two implementations. Remember, print timesheet controller is going to do something very similar to what the timesheet list does. What does the timesheet list do? The timesheet list, if you guys remember, that controller was a, uh, you know, just a plain controller. So we ha all we had to do is um, implement the handle request function, and we were passing we're passing the timesheets, which are the timesheets from that employee, and we're also passing the employee so that we can display the name of that employee. Um, so basically, you know, it's it's as simple as it gets. It's just you're not asking for any data from the user and you're just presenting the data. And that's the same thing with the um, print timesheet controller. The print timesheet controller can be implemented as a, as a simple controller and all you have to do is implement the handle request method. Um, so let's take a look at how that's done um, with the with the uh, plain controller interface. So we're going to need to know what timesheet we're going to print. So we're going to have to pass that as a parameter and we're going to call it TID for timesheet ID. Okay. We're going to need obviously the help of the timesheet manager and the application security manager. And what we're going to do is we're going to pass to the JSP, we're going to pass an object call command. And remember, when we implement the print timesheet controller as a simple form controller, not as a, as a controller, but as a simple form controller, there is such an object call as, uh, there's there's an object call command, okay, which is actually the form backing object. By default, Spring names the form backing object command. So that's in a very similar fashion. That's what we're going to do here in this print timesheet controller implemented as a sim as a you know just a controller. Um, we're going to use the command object so that we can reuse the same JSP regardless of whether the controller is a simple form controller or just a controller. Okay, um, and then the success view obviously. So we have all the getters and setters for our helpers here, the timesheet manager and the application security manager. Oh, I think I'm missing the the one for the application security manager. <coughs> okay. So we're gonna generate the getters and setters for the application security manager because remember you gotta be authenticated here you gotta be authenticated if you wanna be able to print the timesheets any timesheet uh, okay so we're gonna automatically generate the getters and setters for the application security manager here they are the getter and the setter most importantly is the it's the setter that we need but that's okay we can leave both the getter and the setter okay so we have getters and setters for timesheet manager application security and the success view now let's see what we're going to do in the handle request in the handle request what we're going to do is we're going to get the request and from that request we're going to get the parameter called TID so we're going to look for the value of a parameter called TID. And we're going to save it in here, in a string. 
then what we're going to do is we're going to convert that string into an integer. So we're going to do a p integer parse int. And we're going to use that value and pass it to the get timesheet function of the timesheet manager. So the timesheet manager is going to return to us that particular timesheet. And we're not going to um, lock it. So do lock is false. We don't need to lock it. We're not going to modify it. And it, timesheet manager, if it finds the the timesheet, it's going to return it back as timesheet. And that's exactly what we're going to be passing to the view. So we return a new model in view with that success view, whatever that success view we're indicating in the in the configuration file. And we're passing the command key, you know, C O M M A N D. We're passing that variable. And the value for that variable is going to be the timesheet, the one timesheet that was returned from the timesheet manager. So basically, we're just going to tell, hey, we're just going to tell the view, here it is, print hours going to be called print hours. We're just going to tell it, hey, just show me that timesheet. And here it is. Basically, we're going to show using the command dot employee dot name, we're going to show the name of the employee who is the owner of that timesheet. And in here, command that peer ending date, we're going to show the peer ending date for that timesheet. And then we're going to show in a table Mondays through sa Sundays, and then a total of hours. So we're going to, oh, and we're going to show also the department name. So we're going to we're going to say command that department dot name. That's going to show the name of the department, and then command that minutes Monday. Now notice this. Notice that in here we're not using any uh, property editor like we did with with enter hours and enter hours if you guys remember we were we were getting the the amount of time for Monday through Sunday in hours and then we were doing a conversion a massaging of that data we were converted into minutes and we were saving in the databases minutes well <coughs> in this case uh, print timesheet we do not have any property editor so all the massaging we have to do it on the front end on the JSP. That's the reason why before we display minutes for Monday, first of all, we're testing that it's greater than zero. If it's greater than zero, then we are going to divide that value by 60. And that's what we're going to show with this pattern, at least a 0, .0. .0. Otherwise, if it's not greater than zero, we're just going to display a new blank space. Okay, so we don't, we're not going to display any zero that zero if there's no if there's no minutes for Monday, and the same thing for Tuesday all the way to Sunday. Okay, so the massaging of the data is done on the front end on the JSP when we do not have a property editor. Okay, so that's something that you guys gotta um, when you build your your own reports in your own projects, you that's something that you gotta balance and say, okay, do I wanna do I wanna do the massaging of the data in the JSP, which requires a lot more code if you think about it. It requires a lot more coding on the JSP side. Or am I gonna just provide a property editor that will do all the massaging for me um, and then, you know, do less work on the JSP side. And then finally, uh, there's going to be um, a button. It's a submit button, okay. And basically, what it does is it's it's going to on the unclick of that button, it's going to call the window that print. This is typically the way of um, asking the browser to, you know, bring up the the dialog, the printing dialog with the printer and all that stuff and be able to print the page that you're currently at.
so that's basically it that's all let's see it in, in let's see it working Start the server, and we're going to see it working in a minute. Okay, looks good, no errors. So now we're going to log in one. Rapid Java. That's Mike Dover. Okay. These are all his timesheets. This is timesheet list. So if we want to see a timesheet that is still pending, it's going to go into our inter hours. And, and look at the look at the URL on the bottom of the screen. If the timesheet is pending, that means I'm still working on it, it's going to take me to enter hours, htm, and I'm going to be passing the timesheet ID equals 18 in this case. Uh, but if the timesheet has been approved or submitted, then notice that it's not going to take me to enter hours, it's going to take me to print hours. That's what shows, us, shows up in the bottom of the browser print hours with that specific timesheet ID so you guys have to modify the timesheet list or the equivalent of the timesheet list JSP to accommodate for that so basically what you guys have to do is put in a condition that says okay if the timesheet and this is remember this is back when we were displaying a list of timesheets right so we have a for each and we're passing all the timesheets and each timesheet we're going to call it T and so as we are displaying all the timesheets we ask okay if T status code meaning is the status code of the timesheet is equal to P for pending or D for disapproved then I know that I'm going to have to be able to modified so the link the anchor that I'm going to provide is going to be enter hours that htm and I'm going to be passing the parameter TID which is the timesheet ID of that timesheet but but if the status code of the timesheet is either a for approved or s for submitted that means I should not be able to modify it so I'm going to create an anchor or a link to print hours instead print hours.htm with the timesheet ID of that particular uh, timesheet okay so that those are the modifications that you have to do on the equivalent of the timesheet list to accommodate for for the the fact that some of them you might be able to modify and some of them you might not so when you click on the print on the one that it's already approved or submitted it's going to take you to print hours and this is what it's going to look like this is timesheet report okay so you're going to be able to display the department the hours for every day a total and then the print timesheet button now this was done let's take a look at the configuration this was done print hours that HTM, that's the URL. You put you have to put it in the URL 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 map authenticate section of it because you need to be authenticated. So it's it has to go through the HTTP request interceptor. You guys remember that's the guy that verifies that you are authenticated. If you're not, it will send you back to the login page. Um, so print hours you have to be uh, authenticated and it's going to be taken care of by the print timesheet controller which is this guy print timesheet controller um, it's going to have 
and I'm going to go into a little bit more detail later on but basically uh, it has to be a session form I remember one of the students asked me a few weeks ago how come when I when I submit a form it all it, it comes back to it comes back to form back in object like it was trying to create the pr the object all over again and the reason it was because we were missing the property session form session form val with value true is indicating spring that this controller contains a form um or it contain yeah it contains a form that it's going to be put into the session so once it's created and put into the session it travels back and forth between the server and the client and it does not create a new one every time that you hit that controller um, so that's important to put you know session form true when you want your entire form to be saved in the session here it is the command class also it's a timesheet we're calling it command class uh, the property command class it's going to be a timesheet also the form view is going to print hours which we know is, it will get translated into print hours .jsp. and then the timesheet manager these are the thi all the things that we're going to get that they're going to get injected oh and I'm missing the I'm missing the application security manager because that's the guy that is going to make sure that application security manager okay so so that's one way of oh I'm sorry guys I was telling you the the I was telling you the difficult way of doing it <laughs> which is through the simple form controller um, this is the one that I'm talking about let me see. I was showing you guys print print timesheet controller two. Okay, print timesheet controller two. Print timesheet controller two. This guy, it's implemented as a simple controller. So all we need is the timesheet manager, the application security manager, and a success view. And the success view is print hours. That's it. So basically, it's gonna it's gonna do you know the handle request. And that's all we need. Okay, and that's what exactly what I just described a few minutes ago, as to how it's done. This print timesheet controller as a simple controller. Now there's another way I've implemented it, the print timesheet controller as a simple form controller. So we're gonna take a look at that one, right here. Notice that it's much less code. Much less code. The simple form controller still requires the timesheet ID as a parameter and it still requires the timesheet manager as a helper. So all you do is make sure that you set the timesheet manager. Okay or create a setter for the timesheet manager and you have to overwrite the form backing object that's it remember you're not asking any information from the user so you do not need to do anything on the init binder or on the on submit or any of other methods that you typically use on a simple form controller um, in this case, all you need to do is prepare the form backing object. And the form back backing object is what? Well, in a very similar fashion as we did with the with the print timesheet controller 2, um, we're going to get the parameter out of the request. We're going to get the parameter called TID. Then we're going to convert it into an integer, into your parse int. And then we're going to send it to the get timesheet method of the timesheet manager and that's going to return to us the timesheet and that's all we're going to do return that timesheet 
and Spring will take care of the rest of the stuff, which is I know where the form view is. I know what type is the command class. I know it's going to be a session form, even though there's no form. You know, it, it's really simple. So it's a little bit more configuration. If you if you think about it, the print time sheet controller done as a simple form controller is a little bit more configuration, but is much less code. You only have to do the form backing object. And that's it. On the other hand, the print timesheet controller 2, the one that is uh, just a controller, is less configuration, if you think about it. Just pretty much just a success view and any helpers much less configuration but it's a lot more code because you're gonna have to do the handle request so it's up to you guys and you have to specify the command as the key that is being passed and you have to specify the success view anyway so it's up to you how you guys want to implement it oh so I was about to say um, the way that it's being implemented right now is as a print timesheet controller. As a print timesheet controller. So it's being implemented as a form, as a simple form controller. Okay? This is it. Right now we're using the simple form controller version of the timesheet. <coughs> so I'm going to modify it and I'm going to use the second version the print timesheet controller 2 which is this guy as a plain controller okay and so I'm going to stop the server I'm going to clean the project should republish and then start the server again and to create the getters and setters for it alright so we're going to save it and then clean So we we just inject in the uh, application security manager in case we need it. Um, I'm not sure that we need it though. I'm looking at this stuff and okay. Let's see. Does this work? Does this work? Let's run it. Yeah. Okay, it's running clean now. So we're going to log in as Mike Dover, Rapid Java, sign in. Um, here's the timesheet list. Then I'm going to click on this approved one. And now this is the implementation of the print timesheet. done with as a regular controller. Notice that there's no difference whatsoever. Visually it's going to the exact same JSP um, and it's using the same command class but configuration wise and code wise they're different because print timesheet controller is a simple form controller which is implementing or overriding the the uh, the form backing object, while print timesheet controller two is just a controller, and it's uh, implementing the handle request and creating it with a command key, etc., etc., and, and making sure that it has a success view, etc. 
So different ways of implementing it, but at the end, result is the same because they're going to the same JSP. All right, so this takes care of timesheet report or print timesheet, the report, my timesheet. So I'm going to cross it out. Okay, save it. And now we have the report printing my timesheet done.